So we're getting ready to go with our second race of the day after what I think can best be described as a dramatic opening race. We're now hoping for more of the same good racing, but perhaps a few less shunts and damaged race cars at the end of the 20 minutes. Full wet conditions for this one as well. The grid is set by the race one results. So it's Henderson from Goddard, row one. Murphy, Clements, row two. James Aspinall and Russell Tamplin. Watch for those two to try and make progress. Jack Harding is just inside the top 10 on the grid. Watch for John Monroe as well. He was damaged in race one. Justin Newnham also likely to make progress as two are Andrew Caird, Dan Irving, Andy Coombs. And certainly keep an eye out for George Lyon. Disqualified from race one. Starts from the back of this one, but he doesn't play to stay there for long so as i said the track is now fully wet after that little bit of a downpour towards the end of race one the track conditions are now very very slippery indeed and so the drivers are going to have to not only fight each other but also fight the track on board with george line you can see all of those cars in front of him and he doesn't want them to be in front of him for too much longer five second board about to go out and then we'll be racing in round eight of the championship and alan henderson on pole he's won one race at every meeting yet so far this year but yet to do the double and here at snetterton he will be looking to put that right we'll wait and see though simon goddard will be keen to get his first win of the year as well and liam murphy and jj clements also will be looking to get themselves back into championship contention then the five second board's been up the red lights are about to go on which they do now and when they go out, we're racing, but a creeping there from Gary Townsend, you can see, but we're off, we're underway. Who gets the start this time around? It was Henderson who held on from pole in race one, but Goddard's going with him this time up towards Rich's corner. Inside line for Henderson, outside for Goddard. You've got to watch out though as Goddard, because JJ Clements wants to get up the inside of him too, and that's exactly what happens. Look, Clements goes second, but it's Henderson who yet again makes the perfect start and holds on to the race lead. Now, we're through Richards safely, but the Montreal hairpin is where things can often go wrong and Clements is attacking for the race lead look at the inside locks up slithers out wide and I think that allowed Goddard back up the inside it looked also like Henderson had drifted a bit uh, wide of the apex that time there's Ray Worley trying to go on the outside of Robert Way in the number five car gets himself up over the curb and as a result loses more positions Andy Coombs one of the drivers going through how's that shuffled out yes it has all changed look because Henderson has dropped down to third and Simon Goddard is going side by side with JJ Clements to try and take the race lead around the outside towards the left-hander at Brundle, but Clements hangs on. So Clements hangs on to the lead. Alan Henderson gets two wheels on the grass, trying to get second place. And Gary Townsend, with his second stunning start of the day, is all the way up into fourth place. There goes George Lyon, and he's made plenty of progress, hasn't he, from the back of the grid? On well, board with him, but behind uh, the John Monroe number 23 car. And we're going to be inside of him into the bomb hole. Jack Harding next up for the charging George Lyon who's already making his way up towards the back end of the top 10 by the looks of it, through Corum. We're closing, closing, closing all the time on Jack Harding in front. Through the right-hander, we're going to go to the inside into the left-hander at Murray's. We are, that's Jeff Gurrier, who gets very sideways in front of the pair of them. Great avoiding driving that from George Lyon. How on earth did that not end up in another accident? That was great stuff from all involved, and it's George Lyon that gains the most out of it. So, leaders go through. It's Clements from Henderson from Goddard. Murphy is fourth, then it's Townsend fifth. That is Russell Tamplin sixth, and James Aspinall has not made a great start. He's down in seventh place, so he's lost two places from where he started. Up through Riches. Eighth place is Richard Wickland, which, which means that George Lyon has passed 11 cars on the opening lap. That's incredible. That is one of the best first laps I've seen in a long time. In wet conditions, he took advantage of the drama in front of him, and George Lyon is into the top 10 already, just ahead of Jack Harding in 10th place. This is the fight, therefore, for 11th. Robert Way, Jeff Gurrier, and John Monroe, amongst others, involved in that. We've also got the number 77 of Jeremy Crook on board with George. This is his start. Well, he made up several of those positions before they even reached the first corner. Well, that's three or four cars he's already got past, going up the inside of Andrew Caird who was another driver eliminated in the accident in race one. Fighting the car all the way through in the wet conditions, using the kerb, that's brave. Now, do we go to the inside of someone here into the hairpin? No, Andrew Caird's going to have that one covered. Oh, no, he didn't. That was just about a Master of X5 size gap at the inside, and George Lyon exploited that to full effect. Goes through. Now we're alongside Robert Way in the number five car, and he got past him. We're now back on board with George, and this is live pictures, and we're going up the inside of James Aspinall now, who squeezes him over to the grass. We've got two Paul Sheard cars to play with, in fact, because just in front is Russell Tamplin in the 93 through Corum, looking to the inside this time into Murray's. You can see how much more commitment George has around the outside. 
and he's going to go past the pair of them. Fantastic stuff, this, from George Lyon. He eases Russell Tamplin out wide, and that hurts his momentum onto the pit straight. So James Aspinall goes through. So too does Richard Wickland, and Jack Harding gets himself alongside, too, in the number 195 car. He may not make that stick, though. He's going to be on the wrong side of the road, I think, in towards Riches. But George Lyon, driving like a man possessed here, his next target is going to be Gary Townsend. And I tell you what, a top five position at the end of this race is certainly on the cards for George. Not bad, having started 20th. We're not even four minutes into the race yet. Richard Wickland there starts to attack James Aspinall who hasn't really made the progress I sort of expected him to in this one. Jack Harding comes charging up the inside of Richard, though. Gets it all locked up, and it wasn't the most elegant of moves, but it works, and through he goes. And then Russell Tamblin gets edged out wide as well, so it's all going on, isn't it, in the midfield. Out in front, though, JJ Clemens is doing an Alan Henderson to Alan Henderson. He's starting to pull away, isn't he, and breaking the toe. Henderson's escaping from Goddard and Murphy. Here comes the fight for fifth, and George Lyon, unbelievably, in just over four minutes of this race, he's going to go from 20th to fifth place. He goes through on the inside of Gary Townsend in the Townsend vehicle hire car. Gary's company that sponsors the championship, based up in rugby. He drops down to sixth place on board with Andrew Caird and we're dropping down through the gears into Brundle and Nelson. That's Jeremy Crook in front of us in the black and orange car. But not quite close enough to attack just yet. JJ Clemens, well, I remember when he won at Silverstone at the start of the year, he celebrated with some uh, drifting, a bit of a drifting exhibition. We're getting another one here today at Snetterton. The greasy conditions helping the cars get even more sideways than usual. Back with Gary Townsend, who has got more coming to join the party now, hasn't he? James Aspinall, Jack Harding, Richard Wicklin in there, and then not far back to Russell Tamplin and Robert Way. Everywhere you look there, you've got somebody to battle with, haven't you? It's all so, so fraught in Master MX5 racing, and such is the strength and depth of the field this year in the Super Cup. There are plenty of very intense fights right the way up and down the order. On board now with Andrew Caird, we're looking at the inside of Jeremy Crook into Rich's corner, later on the brakes, gets to the apex first, can he get the car stopped? Yes, he can, good move, and through he goes. Back now to James Aspinall, who's got Gary Townsend going behind him, so Aspinall goes through, Ooh, bit of a tap in the tail from Gary as he tried to carry some momentum out of the corner, but he drops yet another position, back on board with Andrew Caird now. Hardly know where to look, do you? There's so much going on. Jeff Gurrier up in front, who's run a bit wide out of Montreal, that's gonna hurt his speed off Bentley straight, but he manages to block Andrew Caird for the time being, but you can see there the effect of the slip stream. Andrew closing all the time, pulls to the left-hand side, and then as he goes through the gears, he's actually able to gain even more straight line speed over Jeff, and will surely make the move stick. Look in the rearview mirror, have we got our car all the way across in front? Yes, we have. By the time we hit the brakes, the move's already made, so another place game for Andrew Caird, and then he nearly throws it all away. Look, gets very sideways going into the corner. Now, having just said that Alan Henderson was starting to lose ground to JJ Clements, so he started to close back in. So Clements is being reeled in by the championship leader, and this is a really important race for JJ to try and take points back out of Henderson. Remember, he came into this weekend five points behind Alan, and then lost about four or five points to him in the first race. So that gap has roughly doubled, and he really needs to try and take some points back out of the man who's really led the championship since the opening race of the year. But then JJ Clemens gets very, very sideways to the first corner. He's off on the grass and he loses the lead. What a shame. JJ Clemens just forced into that mistake. He could, you could feel the pressure was building, couldn't you? That Henderson was really starting to um, distract JJ Clements, and it forced the mistake out of him. JJ slips off wide, but he's rejoined right behind him and will surely try and attack again as soon as possible. Checking back in with Gary Townsend, who's continued to unfortunately slide a little bit down the order. Richard Wickland's gone through now. Not quite able to slip back up the inside into the hairpin. That's Russell Tamplin and Robert Way. Robert Way in the wayward motorsport car gets a little bit wayward, doesn't he? Going through the hairpin and almost ends up taking to the 300 circuit. That was a little bit too eager with his right foot, I think, there for Rob. And not only does he lose his chance to attack Russell Tamplin, but he drops back into the clutches of this little scrap which includes, amongst others, John Monroe and Andrew Caird on board with Andrew again down the Bentley Strait. It's a big crack in the windscreen. That's a legacy from the first race shunt. It's eliminated many drivers. Alan Henderson, then your race leader, back through Corum 
is really starting to push hard, isn't he? We've commented several times this season how silky smooth his driving style is. Well, that looked anything but smooth. He's really trying to pull away and break the toe because he knows that even in these damp conditions, the slipstream will have an effect and JJ Clements is going to be able to close in and perhaps attack again. It's exactly the same thing that's happening for third place. Look, Simon Goddard is being caught by Liam Murphy, who got himself onto the podium, was very happy with that podium in race one. Oh, Richard Wickland. Richard Wickland's got off the road. That's at Corum. Not sure if that was on his own, but he will rejoin, but lose a few positions. I'd imagine as Liam Murphy goes for third, he's got it. He's up the inside into Rich's corner and through he goes. As long as he doesn't run too wide on the exit, which he does not, he'll be able to hold on. And Simon Goddard, who finished second in race one, having passed Liam late on when Liam ran into gearbox issues, now drops back in behind the blue number 11 cmmotors.co.uk sponsored machine. George Lyon is fifth, but not really making much progress towards those two, so it looks as though that might be as high as he gets. Not bad from the back of the grid, though. Back on board with Andrew Kerr. We've seen plenty of Andrew in this race, haven't we? Because he's really been in the thick of all of the action. Up in front of him, there's good dice going on. That's Robert Way and Richard Wickland, who's just had that spin. Uh, and also worth mentioning there, Andy Coombs. Andy Coombs, who was uh, pretty badly damaged. He was the car that got airborne in the accident in race one. Um, again, coming from the back of the field, has made good progress. So, novice cross on the back of Richard Wickland's car in front of us. We're getting a great view of that from number 15. And Richard Wickland is pulling to the left of Robert Way. Now, is Andrew Kerr going to make this three abreast, or is he going to just sit in behind the blue number 76 car? Looks like it's going to be the latter, but he will go up the inside of Robert Way, who hangs on in there in the wet, of course. There's often more grip on the outside line, and that was used to good effect by Robert to hold on to the position. Leaders cross the line as we tick down towards half race distance and they're absolutely nose to tail again. So Clements has caught si uh, Alan Henderson, goes to the outside into Riches. Is that one going to work? There's more grip out there, I think. It's a bit drier, isn't it? And yes, indeed, look, he pins Alan down to the apex. Means that Alan can't take the mid-corner speed he'd like to and JJ Clements retakes the lead. These two have done battle on a few occasions this year, so they're well used to racing with each other. And uh, back through into the lead, then goes JJ Clements there, and Murphy and Goddard still strapping over the bottom step on the podium. Murphy unable to escape, as has been really the story all day, hasn't it? Apart from Alan Henderson, perhaps in the first race, being able to break the toe and pull away out in front. No one else has managed it. Henderson's now trying to retake the race lead, gets back in the slipstream, back to the inside towards Brundle. And he's got his nose ahead, and I think he should go through here, unless JJ Clemens can really be brave on the outside. That's what he's trying to do, though, and it might just work. JJ hangs on. Bit of contact going into the right hand, and there was nothing malicious there, just the two trying to find the same piece of road. Someone who'd be happy to find any piece of road is Jeremy Crook. He's been off at Riches, gets going again, no damage done to the car, but a bit of dirt on his tyres. It looks like he's lost a place to Justin Newnham. Back on board with Andrew Caird. Down the straight, and we're still following Richard Wickland. So we still haven't found a way through. Back to the race leading dice, though. JJ Clements has really, really impressed me in this race so far. Look at the car control there as he throws the car from right to left through the exit of Coram and into the final turn at Murray's, and he's starting to pull back away again. Not quite enough to break the toe, but certainly Henderson is not as close uh, in towards Riches as he'd like to be. He's not going to be able to make the move for the time being. So JJ hanging on to the race lead. They go down towards Riches, turn in. Oh, he's locked up, though, he's locked up. JJ Clements locks up the front tyres and off he goes again. Second time this race he's been off at Riches and this time he's done it properly. He not only loses the lead, but loses several seconds to Alan Henderson, who moves back through. And unfortunately, I fear that JJ Clements may have just thrown away his best chance of a race win here today at St. Etherton. Further back, Richard Wickland and Andrew Caird are still together and they're going three abreast now down the pit straight. That looked like it might have been Andy Coombs they were going past, wasn't it? Yes, it is, the number eight car. Andy Coombs loses one spot because actually Andrew Caird is able to get past both he and Richard Wickland. So two places gained from Andrew. Can Richard Wickland complete the manoeuvre? No, he can't. So Richard opened the door for Andrew Caird to find a way past Andy Coombs and then didn't actually make the move stick himself. That's Dan Irving now, first we've seen of him in this race. He's going up the inside now, the 76 car in towards the hair bid. And John Monroe, I thought we might have seen more from John. John, who uh, has been very strong in qualifying in recent meetings, but uh, struggling really to get the race results he might have liked. Care now has someone new to fight with. This time it's Gary Townsend. Townsend in the yellow 223 car on the right-hand side of the road, which is going to be outside by the time we get towards the next corner, which is a long, long way away, though, down this long Bentley straight, the longest straight in the country. And Caird now does manage to get his nose in front. He's late enough on the brakes to make that stick. And a, a shout-out to uh, 
Andrew's team because they've fixed that car beautifully after it was looking extremely second-hand after race one. The car now looks good as new and he's clearly running well as well. Seven minutes to go then. JJ Clements gets through Riches a little bit more cleanly this time but has lost, I think, all chance of catching Alan Henderson here. The fight for third still raging though. Liam Murphy and Simon Goddard. And Goddard in the number 46 Blendini car. Not able really to carry the speed through riches that Liam was then, but he's certainly there. On board with George Lyon, who's now going backwards for the first time in this race, because James Aspinall goes around the outside of him, but then runs a little bit too deep. George won't give in, we know that. He stays to the inside line, clobbers the curb. Car doesn't bounce out too wide, though, so he's still on the inside line towards Montreal. These two have got no one else to get involved in this scrap, so they're going to have plenty of fun with each other, I think, over the remaining six and a half minutes. George Lyon goes through, locks up the brakes. Aspinall had to jump out of the way, and so he's unable for the time being to make the move stick. Meanwhile, another Paul Sheehan race car that's in the thick of the action is Russell Tamplin. He's just lost a place to Andrew Caird. So Caird has fought his way eventually right from the back of the field to the front of this big gaggle of seven or eight cars that are fighting for positions down towards the back end of the top ten. It's Robert Way. Just nearly tapping into the back of Richard Wickland going through the hairpin and out onto the straight. George Lyon runs very, very wide into Brundle and now James Aspinall does go through. So I'm not quite sure what happened to cause that, but George Lyon looks like he made a little mistake on the brakes going into Brundle and uh, drops in behind James. As the Paul Sheard racer goes through. George has still got just over a quarter of the race left to try and find a way back into the top five. Sixth place in itself will be a cracking result from 20th on the grid. But George, having spent most of the first half of the race in the top five, he will be very keen to get back in there. Out onto the pit straight again, back with Alan Henderson, about to put Ray Worley a lap down. Ray in the Bora Motorsport sponsored uh, run car. And the AK automotive machine of Alan Henderson rapidly growing larger in his wing mirrors. Now, back to where some of the real action is. This is Andy Coombs and Gary Townsend with Dan Irving and Richard Wicklund and Robert Way and John Monroe. This is certainly where most of the drama has been in this race, hasn't it? Certainly now that lead battle sort of died down a little bit. Confirmation there, the standings as we stand. Henderson now nearly three seconds clear of JJ Clements. Gary Townsend's going up the inside of Russell Tamplin into Riches. But on the narrow inside line, he had to break early. And you can see the momentum that Tamplin took through the corner. It actually carries him all the way back past Andrew Caird. Caird will try and fight back on the brakes, but he's having to defend as well from Gary Townsend. Dan Irving goes around the outside of Richard Wicklund. Andy Coombs tries to do likewise, but Wicklund's surely going to shuffle him off to the edge of the track. He did. Perfectly entitled to do that, to carry his own racing line through the corner. Can't get any out of the way there, is Ian McDonald in the Townsend, the second of the Townsend cars. Andrew Caird gets up alongside Russell Tamplin now, down towards the S's. Four minutes left on the clock, and this has been a ding-dong battle all the way since the drop of the green flag. And the last lap board, in fact, is going out. So the last lap board goes out a touch earlier than expected, but that's all good news for Alan Henderson. means that that's one less lap for him to have to survive in what have been very challenging conditions. And it must be said, the quality of the racing has been remarkable, given how slippery the track's been. And Alan Henderson can't quite say he hasn't put a foot wrong because he hasn't been able to lead this one in quite the dominant fashion he had in race one. He has now got a comfortable lead, but that's only after JJ Clements threw away the race lead at this corner, Riches, which is where the fifth place battle is now approaching. George Lyon still can't find a way back past James Aspinall, can he? Aspinall doesn't put a wheel wrong himself through the first corner. Jill just kicks him a bit of dirt on the exit. See the front of James's car slightly patched up as well, and that's Jack Harding. And where on earth is he going? He's off into the farmer's field. That looks like it's Riches. Yes, it is. He joins the track. There was no one around him either, so I think he has no one to blame but himself for that one. Shakes the car to get rid of the worst of the dirt and the mud. And as he continues on his way, he's still well clear of this scrap. Andrew Caird still at the front of this group. Indeed, I don't think there have been any changes for at least a lap now, which is pretty much a record for this uh, gaggle of cars. Mind you, we're going on to the Bentley straight for the final time now, so there's bound to be more shuffling. Not at the front, though, because Alan Henderson, having won four races, one at each meeting so far this year, is finally going to do the double. It's taken him till the fifth race meeting of the year, but Alan Henderson takes his second win of the day here at Snetterton, his fifth of the season, and his championship lead bec becomes a little bit more clear now over everybody else. 
What's going on for fifth place though? George Lyons looking back up the inside of James Aspinall. He's late on the brakes into Murray's. Aspinall carried it in even deeper, runs out over the grass, and that could hurt his speed out of the pit straight. George Lyon could get in the slipstream. Oh, but the car slows. The car slows dramatically as it comes across the line. And I think George, I don't want to use the phrase gave up, but certainly didn't continue that fight right the way down to the line, did he? So George Lyon will settle for sixth place. It was unlikely, in fairness, that he was going to get back past James Aspinall, but uh, still, the gap between the two of them is larger than it otherwise might have been. Now, take your bets. What order is this group going to finish in? It's going to be Andrew Caird at the head of the group, then Gary Townsend, then Russell Tamplin, Dan Irving, and Andy Coombs, by the looks of it, in the eight car, uh, towards the back of that little quintet of cars. John Monroe was alongside Richard Wicklin at the line and finished just behind him. Wicklin hanging on just by a tenth of a second or so. But there is Alan Henderson, then your race winner. Alan, who extends his championship margin then ever further over JJ Clements and Simon Goddard. Goddard unable to make it two podiums for the day here at Snetterton, but still a third and a fourth. Again, consistency is the word that is so often associated with Simon Goddard, and it's been another super consistent weekend with drop scores taken into account. Of course, that changes things around slightly, but still, if you can be finishing top five in every race, that is how to build up a championship challenge. Of course, the problem is when this man here keeps winning the races, that makes that a little bit harder to do. So Alan Henderson will bring his car back to the pit lane where he will celebrate with the AK Automotive team after a double race win here. There is the confirmation. JJ Clements snatched an extra point for the fastest lap, though. Liam Murphy third, then Goddard, Aspinall, Line, Jack Harding, Andrew Caird, Gary Townsend and Russell Tamplin ran out the top ten. Dan Irving, Andy Coombs, Richard Wickland, John Monroe, Robert Way, Justin Newnham, Jeff Gurrier, Jeremy Crook, Ray Worley and Ian McDonald round out the field. All 20 cars finish the race. It's the first double when I've had this year. I think you know, all the time I've been racing, I think I've only done double once before. It's great. Um, I, I didn't want it to rain for the second race, but as it turned out, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And me and JJ seemed to have the legs on on the rest. I don't know exactly what was going on, like battles wise. And we're having a really good race. And I was in front, he was in front. And then we went up to the first corner there, and he just locked the brakes. And, and you know, it was just kind of trying to drive as smooth as I could not make mistakes, I knew he would be quick on his own as well. So, yeah, it worked out in the end. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It's a great race we've had in the first half. It's shame I came off in the first corner. I uh, can't remember the name of it, but um, no, it was a great race until then. So, yeah, no, some more points, it's good. Excellent. I mean, and you did come off in the first corner, but you still made it back. You still battled with Alan all the way till the end. And, you know, you two were just switching places constantly. And it was a great battle to watch. I know, it's great. Alan's a great guy to race with. He's, he's a... Kind and fair, he's uh, also got a bit of aggression to him as well, so no, it's a great race. Yeah, happy as it could be really, um, didn't get the best of starts there and then, um, well, it's still still a bit damp so I was just edging my way around but uh, managed to get past Simon and there was no chance of catching these two so I was just settled there. Yeah. It looks like you've really put your stamp on the season as well, do you think it's going to go upwards from here? Uh, well, I hope so, yeah, it was just after the bad start, yeah, it's what we need really. So here's confirmation of the championship standings then. What was a five-point advantage for Alan Henderson now turns into a slightly more comfortable 11-point lead over Clements, Goddard, Murphy and James Aspinall round out the top five.